Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to show you guys some vehicles that have made their way over from Expeditions to SnowRunner and they are new but they are not officially from Sabre. This developer that fashioned these vehicles has been featured on this channel since late 2022 with mods like the upgrade randomizer, the XP difficult measures, removing snow from regions, and the infamous Dave's dangerous deliveries and more. Today, however, Naked Dave yet again has found a way to select a few vehicles and bring them over to SnowRunner with some other surprises as well. As most of you know who follow the channel, I'm not super fond of mod vehicles, yet there have been some I've been keen to try, which have come from folks that have been contributors to the channel. Before revealing these seven expedition vehicles, let's just start with a surprise first that we mentioned just a minute ago. In Expeditions, roof racks were able to be placed on many areas of the vehicle and they are also customizable with resources of your choosing. Now, thanks to Dave's efforts, these vehicles have roof racks similar to Expeditions while also being customizable. Attaching these add-ons requires certain fenders, racks, or bumpers. The options that you can choose are essentially up to you to fit your mission. I personally was absolutely shocked to see something like this. And the second and last surprise here before we start is that it is available for consoles except for the Nintendo Switch. In the past, we've seen trucks from SnowRunner make their way over to Expeditions, but not officially in the other direction. Indeed, some folks have been able to do this prior to Dave, but I don't believe they've been able to implement the add-ons, resources, and toolkits with their respective roof racks. Not to mention all the Halloween skins that you're going to see here shortly. All right, guys. Let's check out these seven vehicles. The most interesting yet powerful vehicles on this lineup would probably be the Step 4279 Albatross. Boasting an engine share with a Tega, 59-inch custom tires, amazing ground clearance, always-on features, respectable stability, and add-ons that actually fit the vehicle. Not to mention it has a front and rear steer, making its maneuverability fantastic while being able to catch itself when jarred off balance with that sharp steering. Something you might notice pretty much across the board with most of these vehicles is their gearbox options. They aren't necessarily the same as what we've been used to. In reference, the high range gearbox isn't really as fast as the normal high range gearbox you'd have in SnowRunner, but the vehicle seems to handle its top gear very well, even under load. There's not really much I don't like about the Albatross, other than the sporadic fuel consumption, which essentially is natural pending terrain and load. Truthfully, I'm still not used to how sharp it can steer. There might be some folks wondering why it doesn't have more add-ons like a saddle and such, but I believe if it did, its suspension would probably compress too much without the power of a dually tire adding a rear mass scale and stiffening its suspension to handle those loads. Currently, its off-road prowess is around similar to the Vorons and Tegas of old, which would potentially put this vehicle at the top of its class as well. My personal favorite here on this list is probably the AFIM S1960, boasting the Transstar's engine at 160,000 torque, switchable all-wheel drive and diff lock, normal gearbox options, exceptional ground clearance, and good add-ons for its compressed size. The AFIM seems to handle terrain better than I expected, but not so good to say it's top tier. Like the Albatross, its stability used to feel like it's had glue on its tires, but with some adjustments, this truck is comparable to the Zix 5368. I think I enjoy playing this one the most because it's still a vehicle that your attention essentially needs to be locked in at times. Watching your vehicle's balance, switching off all-wheel drive to save fuel, and allowing your rear axles to fire under diff lock and picking the terrain you wish to dodge or tackle are all engaging elements. In my humblest opinion, that's the gameplay I love. The only things I would probably knock on the 1960 is its fuel tank size, but those techniques that we just mentioned and the roof racks provided can help mitigate this. Starting off with the largest scout vehicle in this list, the Collie Pug drives very similar to its Expedition version. 
The Pug boasts a good bit of power, always on diff lock, switchable all wheel drive, and unique gearboxes that are basically between normal truck gearboxes and special gearboxes. With impressive balance, 51 inch custom tires, and the ability to haul large trailers, the Pug stands out due to its size and slow and steady nature, similar to that of the Burlak or even the Yar. Its ground clearance, which I probably will say this about all these vehicles here on this list, is it's pretty much incredible due to I think how they were made for expeditions. With plenty of fuel add-ons attached, the Collie's range can be quite far and also can be used to support other vehicles with trailers attached. Even though I do think it's a slower vehicle, its speed has surprised me at times. The Sheba 6J Overlander, in short, is one crazy scout with its unique roof racks, gearboxes that are a little bit slower than normal scout gearboxes, yet it doesn't look that way from how quick and agile it feels when driving. With either gearbox of your choosing, the Overlander, in my opinion, will probably outperform most small vanilla scouts. Compared to that of the Gore by 4 due to its rapid nature, the Sheba actually feels good to drive at speed. Its steering, balance, and power will impress you, plus its roof racks and overall aggressive aesthetic is pleasing as well. Donned in a unique twitch drop camo, the AFIM Hornet compares with the likes of something like the Chevy CK1500 or the Con Sentinel, but in truth it's much more nimble and reliable at faster speeds. As you can see here on the video, you basically can just spam the clutch bump and keep this truck pushing the pace even with slower gearbox options. Its stability at speed with the violent turn inputs was, for lack of a better word, awesome. The Kako Canyon in Expeditions was a decent truck with good balance and was outfitted with roof racks as you see here on the video. In comparison to something that is a vanilla truck like a Land Rover, the Kotko would trounce most smaller 4x4s, as would most of these vehicles here you're going to see on the list. With advantages in collision mesh, aka ground clearance, and most of the time stability. The Kotko is kind of surprising in the way because it actually can get moving pretty quick and also have good maneuverability. Last, but honestly, the truck that shocked me the most of these smaller 4x4s is the Shiro. Although it doesn't have trailer support, the Shiro, with always-on differential locking, absolutely flew down trails you see here. At speed, scouts in the game usually feel really squirrely to drive, as mentioned in prior videos, but here, there wasn't really a moment I felt uncomfortable with the vehicle's fast pace and quick response steering. Compared to something like a Jeep or a Land Rover, I definitely feel this truck would be an upgrade. Its balance and its off-road ability and smooth drive, personally to me, felt great. As a bonus footage here, I wanted to add in some trucks from a friend and contributor to this channel since pretty much 2021. My good friend Max Power is the main tester, editor, and creator of this video that is still on the channel and in my opinion is still the best video that I have currently. As a token of appreciation, I'd like to briefly show his creations as well. Max has made mod maps which are inspired by Mudrunner and has some purpose-driven vehicle mods here that we're going to show shortly. The 73 Pesar F550 recovery vehicle is one that was made to have a focus on just being a wrecker. Something you'll notice here, some of these trucks don't have many add-ons, but they are purposed this way to be a part of your fleet to fulfill the role of the add-ons provided. The 550 also has an actual Detroit diesel engine name, realistic fuel capacities, larger tires to aid in recovery and hauling via saddle, and many other things. You will also notice its power should be greater than that of the normal 5070 Paystar in-game. The Pacific P12 Roughneck on this mod was given a real fuel tank capacity, a more powerful engine, 
eight-speed gearbox, and 68-inch tires, which were only used on three models available. This truck features a custom bed with live roller mechanics. For this mechanic, please click on the video that is attached to the mod's description. For those who have had trouble with a normal P12 in the game of SnowRunner for hauling, this one definitely makes it easier and you don't have to downgrade your tires to actually pull heavy loads. So check this one out. The last mod and probably my favorite here, even though I'm going to just briefly describe it, is the Paystar 5050, which in short is essentially a more stable, more powerful and more versatile 5070. Out of all the trucks in the game, the P12 and the Paystars have been such a pleasure to use. But I have to admit, playing around with these mods and actually seeing them not struggle can feel quite good. So in closing folks, no, I am not turning over to mods, but I do have to admire the talent, especially those who have helped this channel in ways that I simply cannot repay. But I hope this is a good start. So here's to Max Power and Naked Dave. So until next time y'all, God bless and stay upright.